Now that we've taken care of the basic security of this plugin, uh, what we want to do is now start coding out our plugin. So when this plugin is activated, it actually does something. So as you saw in the previous videos, we could activate the plugin, but it really is activating nothing. To do the coding for a plugin, there are two ways you can do it. You can use procedural PHP, which is just the basic PHP that you probably learned when you first started learning PHP. And then there's our object oriented PHP, which encapsulates code into classes. Uh, and this is the way we're going to do it because it's the recommended way to do it and also allows you to uh, keep your code tidy and maintainable. And it also uh, stops the ability for your functions to have clashes with other plugins. So for example, if you create a function uh, that another plugin is using as well, they will clash and there will be problems in WordPress. So the only thing we need to uh, make sure now is that our class does not have the same name as another class. Uh, but that shouldn't be too hard. In this case, we're going to create a class called simple contact form. So that's the name of our plugin. So I'm just going to do in camel case, simple contact form, and we'll close that off. And then what we'll do underneath that is just instantiate that class. So new simple contact form. That's as simple as it gets. The class is created now, there's nothing in it still, but then we're instantiating that class and that's what's going to happen when the plugin loads, it's going to run anything within this class. So if we go back here and refresh, obviously still nothing's happening, but that's fine. Now we can actually start making things happen. The first thing we're going to do in this plugin is to create a custom post type. A custom post type is something that is going to come up in the back end of the website. So if we go here, into the back end and on the left hand side, like the video I showed you in the first video, it's going to be the inquiries button, click into it and you'll be able to see all the forms that are submitted through there. They're all going to be stored in their own custom post type. So to do that with a class, if you're familiar, you need to use a method called construct. And that is basically the method that starts up whenever the uh, class is instantiated. That is the first method that's that gets called. So we'll do public function construct. And inside here, this is where we are going to hook in to the WordPress hook functionality. So hooks get loaded uh, at certain times during the WordPress bootstrapping uh, loading process. And we're gonna be using several hooks to hook into the functionality of WordPress. Now the first hook that we are going to hook into is the init hook, which is by doing add action. And then we're going to put the name of the hook. So it's gonna be the init hook. And then we're gonna pass a callback into here. And a callback is basically, uh, I guess, a promise for a function to load when a hook gets uh, created. So essentially, if you've done uh, OOP before, you could do something like this. But we don't wanna do it like that because we don't want that to load unless the hook gets uh, fired. So let's try it out. Let's uh, create a, another method. We'll call that create custom post type. And it's really, really good to be descriptive with the names of your methods so that when you're maintaining or doing updates to this plugin that you know exactly what everything is. So just put it in plain English and make it really simple for you to understand when you're editing it. So we've created this function and we're going to make it, this action load this function when uh, this hook gets called, which is essentially when WordPress loads for the first time. Um, so we're going to, to create a callback, you create a, an empty array, and the first part of the array will be this. And that's just referring, this is just referring to this class. And then the second argument is the name of our actual function, which is create custom post type. So basically the plugin will load by getting instantiated uh, and then it's going to run the construct method automatically when it loads. And then it's going to obviously add all these hooks and these hooks will fire when those certain hooks take place in WordPress. And in, in this case, it's got the init hook is going to say, okay, well the init hook has happened. So let's run this function here 
And in this function, just to test it out, let's just do an echo. And inside this echo, we're going to do script. So it's just a bit of JavaScript. And we'll just say an alert. And inside the alert, we'll put it loaded. And we'll save that. And let's go into our plugin now and just refresh it. There you go. So the plugin is automatically loading when WordPress bootstraps. Cool. Uh, that's obviously not the ideal thing we want to do. So I'm going to get rid of that now. In this function, we're actually going to create our custom post type. So let's go into this function and start coding that out. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to create a variable and I'm going to call it ARGS. You can call it whatever you'd like. And then we'll create an empty array. And this is where we're going to put all the arguments for our custom post type. So a few of the options that we're going to choose is we're going to make it public true. We're going to do has archive. We want it to actually have an archive of the, the, uh, the contact forms that get filled out. We want to have an archive of that. So we'll do true. We'll then do uh, supports. So in the supports option, this allows us to write or to, to set uh, what the actual post type supports. And in this case, we're just gonna do an empty array and just put title there. So it's only just gonna have a title. We're not gonna have anything else like featured image or anything like that, because we don't need that for, for uh, our entries for our contact form. Uh, we're going to exclude it from search. So exclude from search. We don't want our contact forms coming up on the website when you do a search, if you have the search functionality on your website. And we also don't want this to be publicly queryable. So we'll do publicly queryable and we're gonna make that false. So that means that really you can only access this from the back end of the website. Another thing we could do is we could make this post type uh, only be shown to a specific capability. So we'll do capability and inside there, we will do manage options. And that is basically the capability of an administrator. Uh, and then we'll create some labels of the custom post type. So we'll just go labels and then another blank array. And inside that blank array, we'll do the name. So we'll call it inquiries. Actually, we'll call it contact form. Uh, that, that's more kind of in line with the name of our plugin. And then the singular name, when you like a, a, a single contact in entry will be uh, contact form entry, I guess. And then the last one would be the uh, menu icon that we want to come up on the side. So we'll just do menu underscore icon. And this is where we use something called dash icons. So they're WordPress dash icons. So we'll just type in WordPress dash icons. Uh, go to the WordPress website and let's just find something that's kind of similar to a, a form, I guess. I'll just select this one and you just copy that and then you go here and paste it there. That's the name. Cool. So now we've created the options for our custom post type. I'm not sure if I'm missing anything. Well, I might have missed something, but we can always add to it later. Uh, and then once we've created the options there, all we need to do is we need to do a register post type. And then we need to give the post type a name. So we'll just call it simple underscore contact underscore form. And we will add the arguments that we created up here as the argument to this function which should basically load that custom post type. So let's go back here and refresh. And as you can see here on the left hand side now, we have a contact form that comes up. It looks very similar to how a post page does or a normal page does, but it's actually its own post type. Now, when you add new, you'll notice that we only have the ability to add a title, uh, but really we shouldn't even have that. Um, but when a contact form gets created, it's automatically going to fill out that title for us. Maybe with something like contact from and the first name of the person. Now that we've learned how to create a custom post type using a plugin, in the next video, we're gonna create the contact form and then we're gonna make that contact form connect to WordPress and automatically add 
the entries into this custom post type. See you in the next video.